Okay, 5.2, we're gonna get some actual probability rules. Now we're gonna talk about the addition rule, couple of addition rules, and then the complement rule. So let's talk about the addition rule first. Say we have two events, call them E or F. And what I have here is I'm gonna use what's called a Venn diagram to illustrate some of these. You might have seen this in um, maybe another class that had some probability in it, or maybe um, uh, when you're dealing with sets, sometimes um, Venn diagrams are used. So we're going to define event E to be the event, this kind of made up here, but that contains these four dots. The, the dots are the simple events, uh, and then so event E contains four simple events. And then we'll call event F, that one over there, the red one, it contains those five events. So that's, that's E. And what we want to look at is, what would be the probability that E happens or F happens? That's what we want to find, the probability of E or F. Well, we can add the probability of E plus the probability of F, but hopefully you're noticing there's a problem there because we double counted those two in the middle. So we need to subtract those, and those are the probability of E and F. So again, we have the probability of E, I'll use my mouse again here, highlight, so there's the probability of E, those four events, and then the probability of F is those five events, but we've double counted those two in the middle, so we have to subtract one off. So then they're only counted once. All right, um, another concept is this idea of disjoint or mutually exclusive events. Same phrase, disjoint, mutually exclusive. So we'll see quickly here in the Venn diagram what makes this one different. If we have event E and event F, in this case, they don't overlap. If you look at that same rule, the probability of E or F, it's the probability of E plus the probability of F, you don't need the probability of E and F. You don't need the probability of E and F because it's zero. So there's kind of a special addition rule when they're disjoint. For me, that's not really valuable. You don't need a special rule because you can always just use the general rule. And if they're disjoint, um, then that probability of E and F will be zero. So I would just memorize if uh, when you're studying this, just memorize the general addition rule, which hopefully is pretty logical to you looking at it, that you just take one probability and add the other probability and subtract where they overlap. Uh, but that is a rule you need to be comfortable with. All right, the other thing in this section is the idea of a complement, and not a complement like, boy, your hair looks nice today. But this is a complement with an E, which means something very different. Uh, and it's usually used in geometry. You might have heard it in complementary angles. And it's kind of like that here, too. It's kind of the matching uh, complementary angles add up to 90 degrees. So an angle's complement is kind of the leftover to get to 90. So we have a similar idea in um, probability. If we have event E, and I'm not putting any dots here, but this is the event E, the complement is everything else. Uh, and so we use, uh, there's different notations for this, by the way, but the one that our book is using, little e and then the um, little, like, uh, exponent there kind of of C is the complement of E. So if you want to, I left some blanks here uh, in the PowerPoint for you to fill in. The complement of E is everything that's not any. E. That's the complement. You can use your own words to describe that if you want, but that that is the basic idea. So one question we might have then is how does that play a role in probability? Well, hopefully you can see that if I'm looking at the probability of E plus the probability of its complement, that's everything. So if I add the two together, I should get one. Uh, and this can be really beneficial. Sometimes um, an event E itself can be a little complicated and it's difficult to calculate. But if you know the probability of its complement, you can just take one minus the probability of its complement. So sometimes that's useful, again, if, if E is a fairly complicated event, uh, but the complement, what's left over is not, you can use the complement. Um, this, this is called the complement rule, but it's, it's just pretty obvious there about that, that idea of subtracting everything else from one. All right, and again, you're gonna need to see lots of examples. You're gonna need to practice some homework problems. These are just, this video is just really theory. Look in the link, whoops, I bumped my mic there. Look in the link below. Uh, for the online lesson, plenty of examples to try, um, and after you get done with the homework, hopefully you'll feel more confident.